Growing up is fun, but some of the things Molly used to do seem a little silly now. Sometimes she gets all mixed up just thinking about it. She's changing from a child into an adult, and it's a little confusing at times. Molly had lots of questions about what was happening to her. It so happened I had a chance to answer some of them. Her teacher was sick one day and asked me to take her class. And this is true of women everywhere. So you see, menstruation is just the natural, normal process leading up to being a mother. This is a diagram of the uterus, or womb, and these are the fallopian tubes leading to it. And these the ovaries which produce the egg cells. Now these egg cells are far too small for us to see, but once each month an egg cell will leave one of the ovaries, go into the opening of the tube nearest to it, and then it's on its way to the uterus. Now at the same time the uterus has been preparing a growing place for this egg, a soft lining of blood vessels and tissues. If the egg unites with a male cell or sperm as it's on its way down the tube, it is fertilized, and then when it reaches the uterus, it settles down in this soft lining and begins to grow into a baby. But if the egg cell is not fertilized, it disappears. And then, since the lining is no longer needed, it too dissolves away. And it flows out of the body through an opening in the hymen which is a membrane over the opening of the vagina. And so we say that we are menstruating. Yes, Barbara? Miss Jensen, when does menstruation start? Well, some girls start when they're 10 years old and some when they're 16 or 17 or anywhere in between. But the average age seems to be about 13. No, I mean what day of the week will it start? My mother starts on Tuesday. Will mine too? Oh, it might, but it probably won't because each girl's body sets up her own time and rhythm. And the time between periods may vary anywhere from 23 to 32 days. And the flow lasts from two to seven days, also depending on the girl's own rhythm. Miss Jansen, how often should you change napkins when you're menstruating? Well, that depends on the amount of flow, but probably five or six times a day. And that brings up another point. Many of you girls haven't started to menstruate yet, but when you do, you will want to use a sanitary napkin to absorb the flow. It's a soft, absorbent pad, and it's made to fit over the opening of the vagina and to follow the curve of the body. The tab ends are attached to a narrow elastic belt, which you can wear around your hips or waist. Now, some girls prefer to use tampons. A tampon is a cylinder of absorbent cotton inside a cardboard applicator. It is inserted into the vagina by means of the applicator. The cotton absorbs the flow, and when it is full, you remove it and discard it. Yes, Molly? Miss Jensen, is it true that people can tell when you're menstruating? No, it isn't. But you should be more careful than ever about personal cleanliness and dainties. Change your underwear more often, and be sure and use a deodorant. And pay more attention to your hair and your nails and plan to wear your prettiest dress. In other words, be your most attractive self. And remember, menstruation is only a part of growing up. As you grow, your body changes from that of a young girl to that of a woman. It's becoming round with the beginnings of a bosom and the start of a real waistline and hips. And hair is beginning to grow in different places, pubic hair and underarm hair. Yes, Anne? Miss Jensen, what about dancing? Can you when you're menstruating? Yes, you can with moderation. In fact, you can do most of the things you usually do. You can bathe or shower as long as you use warm water. And you can wash your hair if you're sure to dry it quickly. And you can swim if you wait until after two or three days after the beginning of your period. And you can go to dances and picnics. But it's not a very good idea to skate or ride horseback or play fast games like volleyball and basketball or do strenuous dancing like square dancing or anything that bounces you around a lot. In general, mild exercises are best. Ones that strengthen the abdominal muscles are particularly good. It's sensible to avoid strenuous exercise when you're menstruating. And you'll be sure and tell your mother or me if everything doesn't seem to be just right. 
Now, I'd like each of you to take one of these booklets about menstruation, and when you finish reading it, if you have any questions, be sure and come and see me. And remember, menstruation is as normal and natural as eating or breathing or sleeping.